You ever go into that nest box? You look in, you see fur, she built a nest, but for some reason you're thinking, okay, no babies, it's day 30, day 31, still no babies, day 32, still no babies. Why did you pull fur? Why'd you build a nest if you weren't gonna have any babies? Are you gonna have babies? How long does it take? Well, I'm gonna try to address a couple of those things after almost 16 years since I started doing rabbits, raising rabbits, breeding rabbits in our rabbitry. Um, I've learned a few things through the years and I'd have to say there's a couple of different things that really caught me off guard when I first started off too. So we're gonna address a couple of those things today. So stick around for a few minutes. So this is one of my 27 gallon kindling boxes is what I call it. And as you can see, I got a little face poking out looking at me there. So what I built these for is so that I can bring it in the house and I can try to prevent what some of the breeders may call DOW or dead on the wire. One of the worst things in the world is whenever you have a, a rabbit that delivers their babies in the middle of the night on the wire instead of in the nest box. So I usually keep my babies, uh, my rabbits in these for about one to three days, depending on how long it takes them to uh, have their baby. So about day number 28, I'll put mom in here with a nest box and uh, it's quiet, it's in the air condition and I can stack these on top of each other if I've got multiple does that are expected to deliver. So the reason why we're doing this video today is because uh, I've got two different does that we're expecting after 30 days and we're on day number 33 and they still haven't delivered. So I'm gonna give you a little shot inside here because I felt like this is probably the ideal teachable moment. This is after a few days of being in here and as you can see, some of the Carefresh, he's kind of tossed that around. That's what I use, Carefresh and a little bit of hay. So there are no babies in here, but as you can see, she's got fur. She's pulled fur. Part of the reason why that that is, is because these are veteran seasoned, if you will, moms who know what it means to build a nest. So what these moms will do, you put the box in there and this is not their first rodeo. So this, you know, it can happen with a first time mom too, but it's pretty common when you get a mom that's had maybe one, two, three, four, five, whatever litters. And so what they do is you put that nest box in there. It's kind of uh, instinct for them to go ahead, pull fur and build their nest. But that doesn't always mean that they are gonna deliver at the 30 day mark. That doesn't mean that they're pregnant. It's kind of confusing because when they start pulling fur, you get excited and you think to yourself, oh boy, they're gonna have babies, but that's not always the case. So a couple of misconceptions is, is that uh, if my rabbit doesn't have babies at day number 30, and that's 30 days from the day that they were bred, that for some reason that maybe they're not gonna have babies at all. Uh, I think the longest that I've ever gone that I've had a, a rabbit that's delivered her babies intact uh, was about 32 and a half, 33 days. So 32 is usually about the cutoff for me. 33, it's pretty much for me, it's a done deal. Not that it, it's not possible after that, but usually about 32 days, 33 in that time frame. If they haven't already had their babies, I'll go ahead and um, take them out of the nest box and out of the uh, kindling box if that's what they're in and I'll put them back in their uh, cage environment for a little while. Give them a couple of days and then uh, usually around day 35 to 37 if I don't see anything change I'll go ahead and rebreed them. So don't get uh, too upset if you look in your nest box and you see fur but you don't see any babies. I know it's frustrating, especially when you've waited an entire month. So what are some things that you can do to be able to know whether they're pregnant? Well, I know that you can palpate them and that you can feel the babies in their stomach. Personally, I don't like to do that. I don't know, it's just me. There are some people that are really good at that, and uh, but I've seen mixed results when it comes to that. There's a couple different things that I prefer to do. Number one, uh, there's times that I'll just let nature take its course and I won't worry too much about whether or not they really are 
uh, pregnant. If they're pregnant, great. And uh, if not, I'll rebreed them because I don't like to, I don't like to overbreed my rabbits and put a lot of stress on them anyway. So the other thing that I have done and uh, it can work out well if you're keeping pretty good track of it, especially if you don't have a real large rabbitry or you only have one or two rabbits. If you get you a weight scale, uh, I prefer a digital weight scale. What I have is one that I got off of Amazon and it's a uh, baby weight scale. And so you can weigh babies on it, but you can also use it for rabbits and it works really well. It's very accurate, the one that I use. And so I use that weight scale and weigh the baby, the uh, moms and I try to keep an, an average of about what mom weighs uh, before that I breed her. And then if you weigh mom right around the time that she delivers, well, if you ever keep decent records of it uh, and you have that mom deliver kits, whatever weight she was then, if you kind of track that in the future, if you think, well, she may or may not be pregnant, you can usually weigh her and get a feel of it. That's still not a perfect way, but it but it does uh, work out. So a couple different things you can do, but in terms of whether or not you should rebreed the, the rabbit, there's nothing wrong with you rebreeding her within a few days after that you realize that she's not pregnant. Uh, the one thing that you don't wanna do is, is early on, a mistake that some people will make uh, because rabbits do have two uterine horns where they can get pregnant in. You'll have someone that they'll have one good fall off and they can't seem to get any more than that. And so uh, once they have that one good fall off, a couple days later, they'll breed that rabbit again. And the sad thing is, is that she can actually deliver the first pregnant, if you want to call it that litter in one horn, uh, too early and then cause the, her to lose all the babies. So you don't want to do that. Usually within a 24 hour period, 12 to 24 hours, uh, you can leave a, a buck and a doe if they're, you know, compatible in the cage together overnight. If you feel like you need to do that, if you just want to make sure that she is pregnant, uh, I know it's frustrating, but the reason, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video this morning was because it's a, it's a teachable moment. Maybe help somebody that doesn't really understand because here's the thing, the two, two of the rabbits that I have that um, had false pregnancies is what we call it. They had both had three really good fall offs. And by that, I mean, whenever the uh, buck mounts the doe and falls off in rabbitry terms, uh, breeder terms, that would, that would uh, constitute the fact that she's most likely pregnant, but it doesn't always go that way. Some people joke around about how, you know, breeding like rabbits, but the truth is, is that it's not always as cut and dry and as easy as it sounds. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. If you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments. These are some of the newer videos on our new channel. So it may take a while for these things to pick up steam over time, but I wanted to give you a chance to uh, kind of get a feel of, of the reason why that maybe mom didn't have babies. Uh, you may ask yourself, well, did I do something wrong? Or is it eventually gonna happen? Uh, it's possible that she may still have babies around day 31, 32, but when you start getting past that, it's a whole lot less likely. So the very best to you. And uh, thanks for watching the video today. And if you think that maybe in future videos, some of the stuff that we may share from our many years of experience, you think that you could benefit from it. Hey, like the video and uh, subscribe to our channel for future notifications, uh, hit the bell. So hope the very best for you. God bless.